Charlie. Get off. Now, come on, Go John. away. Look, hang on, Get Charlie. Off. Look. Look, hang on a minute, will you? Look, where are you going? I'm going to meet someone who's going to sort the whole thing out. There's nothing to sort out. No. We're supposed to be partners. And you've done me out of over a hundred grand. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, Charlie. Maybe the police will see it differently. <laughs> They'll laugh at you. So will the lawyers. We built this business up together. Everybody knows that. Not on paper, we didn't. I made sure of that right from the start. No, this is where you belong, Charlie. Among all the rubble. Dirt. Sweat. Oh, you dirty, rotten crook, you. It's a hard game, a grueling test of speed, skill and stamina. It sharpens the reflexes, toughens the body, quickens the killer instinct. Sometimes it pits brute power against the cutting edge of a ruthless, patient strategy. To me, it's more than a game. It's a fast, devious training ground for the kind of life I lead. Besides, it helps me keep my weight down. <sighs> OK, Simon. You're fitter, faster, and better. <laughs> and maybe just a bit luckier. Hmm? No, no. I'm the lucky one. Lucky I didn't have a heart attack. Whew. Sorry, Tony. Visitor. <laughs> Don't you think I'm more in need of her services than you are? Strictly non-professional. Try a cold shower. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Simon. What's the trouble, Jenny? Well, it's Dad. He sounded really worried. Mm -hmm. He thinks Ray's cheating him. He's convinced Ray's swindling him out of his partnership. Oh, why doesn't he go to the fraud squad? I think he would if he was sure. That's why he wants your advice. Mm -hmm. uh, Jenny, this is the gentleman's changing room. Well, I see naked bodies every day. Yes, of course you do. Well, it might liven things up a bit. Might get me thrown out, though. <coughs> Excuse me. Something the matter? Uh, Sprain my thumb. Oh. All right, Jenny. What do you want me to do? Well, just see him, advise him. He's meeting Ray at the demolition site today. Dad sounded so angry on the phone. Angry enough to do something stupid? Yes. Thought he'd left the side, officer. Shortcut. We all use it.
Having heard the pathologist's report, there seems no doubt that Mr. Stewart's death was directly attributable to falling masonry. But from the evidence, it would seem that no blame can be attached to anyone in this case. Members of the jury, will you please consider your verdict? Accidental death, sir. Thank you. Very well. I will now record a verdict of accidental death. I went through some of the notes Dad had taken. He reckoned that Ray had cheated him out of £100,000. Mm. What about the company records? They don't even show Dad as a shareholder, just a working director. Everybody at the company knew Dad and Ray were having arguments, but nobody would get up in the court and say so. Yes, our friend Ray Dennis has got rather a nasty reputation. It isn't right that he should get away with it. He won't, Mrs. Stewart. He won't. First of all, we'll get Charlie's money back, and then we'll settle with Ray. Can I help? Jenny, you are going to be absolutely indispensable. Go for him, Rex! the bad guy, right? So when you rush him, I want you to growl like a dog. <coughs> yeah? See? After all, you've got the name for it. And Terry, you're the nice one. So be nice. I want all the old ladies to love you. Go on, take it from round two. Go! My money's on the good guy. Simon! How are you? I'm very well, Sammy, and how are you? What can I say? They're making a living. And what can I do for you? You, uh, you heard about Charlie Stewart. Ah, terrible. Terrible. His daughter thinks Ray Dennis killed him. I'm not surprised. Ray Dennis never was no good. Money mad. I'm going to have a crack at Mr. Dennis. I may need your help. Simon, I've been straight for years now. You straight? Well, let's say more or less straight. Mm. Sammy, as I recall it, you used to be the best man in London at parting people from their money. London, Simon, I was the best in Europe. The guns is Nishkanook. After all, you're talking to the man who once sold the same non-existent hotel in Spain to four different people inside six days. Yes, that is classy. How much did you get? Five years. Mind you, I managed to sell the governor a few shares in an Australian silver mine before I got out. What can I do for you? Go on, let's take it. Yeah. Where have you parked? Around the corner. What have you got in mind, Simon? Something like that. All you have to do is to find the lady. There you are. You choose that one. Yeah, that's how I started as a kid. You see, the geese are looking very interested. It's the shell. And the guy standing beside is the one they're going to set up. Right, we are. We'll do it again. Watch the lady. Yeah, I'll have five pounds on that one. Five pound. There's my five pound as well, sir. Right. Turn that one over. Hard luck. Yeah. Could have sworn it was that one. Yeah, this one. Could have sworn it was that one. You don't give anybody a chance. You work too fast. I don't even get a chance to get my money down. Have a bet with pleasure, sir. Any time you like. There's no limit. Any amount you want to put. Five pound, yeah, ten pound, fifty pound. Whatever you want to do. It, you know. All right. right. I'll, let's have another go then. All right. They're going to take him, Sammy. Because out of all those innocent, simple-looking people, he's the one with the mark of greed on his face. Here we go then. Once again then. Find the lady. Find the lady. There we go. There you are, sir. Right. I'll have 20 pounds on that one. Right, I'll cover that. Oh, and my friend will have 20 pounds too. Sure will. There's my 40. Right. Hard luck, sir. Should have had that one, shouldn't you? You know, Ray Dennis has got the same look. He gets vertigo if he stands on his wallet. He likes a game of cards himself, a poker player. Big stakes. Do you ever play with him? Once a week. Do you cheat? Not in his company. Not unless you want to go around in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. <laughs> Mind you, you're a bit of a card player yourself. Deal me in next time you play, Sammy. I'm not even a Catholic.
accusing you of anything, Mr. Dennis. What's all this about, then? That's your brand, isn't it? I found that next to your partner's body. A lot of people smoke them. Your partner didn't smoke. <laughs> You're proud of that. Yeah, real genius. You're really proud of... What else are you proud of? Our filing system at the yard. It's all computerised these days, you know. What's that got to do with me? Well, put a name in the computer. And it's amazing what that lovely machine comes up with. Like three years for grievous bodily harm in 1961. Assault charge in 1966. Not guilty. Very good lawyer. What I'm trying to say, Mr. Dennis, is that you're a very violent man. Yeah, that's right. So if you've got anything else to say, you better say it to my lawyer. That makes it all seem a bit formal, doesn't it? Especially as you, uh, you really don't have anything to worry about, you know. You snooping around here. That's a worry. Not exactly good for business, is it? Business? Yeah, business. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? What we're talking about, Ray, is peace of mind. No. What I think we're talking about is the way police wages haven't kept up with the cost of living. Right? Something like that, yeah. Thank you, dear. Hello, boys. He's a friend of mine, Sir Malcolm Street. This is Ray, our host. Hello, how do you do? That's Andrew, Hi. Henry Hello. and Tarek. Hello. Hello. What kind of oil he's got. You don't fry potatoes with <laughs> Sammy tells me that you like a little action, Sir Malcolm. Oh, just Malcolm, please. Yeah, hate his title. Why don't you sit here between Henry and me? Oh, thank you, uh, Ray. I don't know if Sammy's told you. No limit. Draw poker with the odd round of dealer's choice. Andrew, why don't you give some up? Al why don't you give Malcolm a few chips? What sort of uh, what sort of money are we playing for here? I like to have a grand or two in front of me. Oh, fine. Well, I'll take a thousand if I may, please, Andrew. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have the same, Andy. There we go. That's five hundred. Right, there. gentlemen. Indeed. Let's play a little bit of poker. Uh, that makes you two on the book, Malcolm. Oh, dear, oh dear. I don't seem to be having much luck tonight, do I? Well, I think you better make it another two, Andrew. Good old Malcolm. Keep on blasting. <laughs> yes, deal him out, Sammy. No, right. I think I've had enough. Oh, come on, no, a few right. more rounds. I promised the wife, Malcolm. Don't you think you ought to go? Certainly not. Got to get some of my money back. Well, of course he does. The man's had a run of bad luck. Yeah. Well, honestly, I, I want to pack up. Andrew, I'm square on the book. You are. Malcolm? Off you go, Sammy. If nobody minds, I think I'd like to hang on for a little. Pleasure having you here, Sir Malcolm. Good night, boys. Good night, Good night, night Sammy. Night. Right. Meet a deal. Malcolm, are you in for 150? Yes, sir. Put me in, would you? In fact, uh, I think I'll raise. My 300. What about making it 900? I pass. I think Sir Malcolm's got himself a hand. Well, I feel a bit lucky myself. 
raise a grand. That's 1,900 to you, Mal. Seems to be getting a little heavy, doesn't it? Well, I'm afraid I've got to call that. Me too. Make it a thousand. All right. Cards, oh, gentlemen. I'll take two, please. And two for me. Me? I'll just have the modest one. seem to be out of chips. I think we can trust Sir Malcolm with a marker, don't you? Well, if he wants to call. It's awfully good of you. Thank you. Two and a half, is it? Let's make it three, shall we? Ah, uh, that's a bit heavy for me. I think I'll just pull out. I'm sorry to do this to you. I've just got to raise you again. Another three. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, my old grandfather always warned me. Never call on a one-card draw, he said. It was one card you drew, wasn't it? You should have been watching, Malcolm. Yeah, it was one. Well, what did my old grandfather know, anyway? Uh, you don't mind, may I scribble another marker? Here we are. I'm calling you. Four pretty tales. Well, it's too good for me, I'm afraid. Beats my little full house. Sorry, Malcolm. Well, I seem to be the big loser tonight. What am I down, Andrew? 10,000. Not my lucky night. Well, that's it for me, I'm afraid. I hope you don't mind a check. No, of course we don't. Tell you what, give me the check and I'll pay out the others. Always keep plenty of cash handy. Streets. There we are. Ta. Well, we play most Fridays if you fancy trying to get your money back. Fridays? Splendid. Well, I'll see you then. Good night. Good night. Yeah, lovely. So we've done this really rich mug. Ten grand. Oh. You should have seen the last hand. Well, you are a terrific player, right? We had him in a nutcracker. Yeah? <laughs> Henry, the antique dealer, and me. We slaughtered him. Great. I'll have to, I have to buy a little Sammy a drink for bringing him along. What is it, Sally? Um, I took that check round to the bank, Mr. Dennis, and, um... Yeah. Well, they, um... Uh... Account closed. Hello, Ray. Never mind, hello. What about this? What? Your friend, Sammy. Crooked. A fraud. You think I want to get knocked for that kind of money? Where does he live? Ray, Ray, just a minute. I'll break his legs! Ray, calm down. Let me say something. In my baby's life, I can't believe Sir Malcolm would do a thing like this. He's done it. Ray, let me finish. I mean, I introduced him. As far as I'm concerned, it's my fault. But you can't go around threatening people like Sir Malcolm, can I? No, no, Ray. Look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll settle it. 
Ten grand. Ten grand, yes. From last night's promotions. Didn't have time to go to the bank. Well, I'm glad I got it on hand. Okay. If you want to pay the man's debts. Yeah, hang on. You're not the sort of bloke who throws his money about, Sammy. How come you want to pay his debts? Uh, don't really matter, does it? Yes. I'm interested. Well, uh, the man's done me a few favours. Such as? You know who Sir Malcolm is, don't you? No. He's the permanent secretary to the Department of the Environment, the Civil Service. He's the head man. What's that to you? Well, like I said, he's done me a few favours, sir. I did a pop festival a few years back in the grounds of Walworth Castle, historical place. Well, Sir Malcolm pushed it through for me. I cleared 20 grand. He's done a lot of things for me. So, I owe him a favour. So here's your money, Ray. No. Wouldn't be right, Sammy. Taking your money. Your pals. Wouldn't be right. Give me the cheque. I don't mind paying. Cheque! Now, phone him. I want to meet him. Ray. Phone him. Maybe he can do a few favours for other people. Hello, uh, could you give me some Malcolm Street's office, please? I can be pleased about this, Ray. I wasn't exactly over the moon when his cheque bounced. Uh, could I speak to Sir Malcolm, please? Uh, Mr Jacobs. Oh, is he? Yeah. No, no, it's all right. Uh, I'll call back. Yeah, thank you very much. Not in. Out. Where? Where? Look, as it happens, I know where he is, but we can't interrupt him right here. Sammy, maybe you can't, but I can. <laughs> What the devil are you doing here? Came about my check. Check? Yeah. Oh dear. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Sorry? I should think you're very sorry. Not the kind of thing the Prime Minister would like to hear about, is it? No, probably not. Well, I'm afraid you'll just have to be a little patient, that's all. I'm not a very patient man. You threatening me? Talking about favours. Yes, well, I've got rather a lot on my mind at the moment. Such as? Getting rid of Tower Bridge, for instance. What? Somebody's got the rather quaint idea of buying the bridge and transporting it to America. This bridge? Hmm. Take months. Cost a fortune. How do you know? Because I happen to be in the demolition business. Are you really? That's very interesting. We must talk about that sometime. Nice to have met you again. Bye. into his office? Why not? He owes me. Okay. Sir Malcolm went out over an hour and a half ago. 
He could be back any minute. Hello, Sir Malcolm. Mr. Dennis, what a very persistent fellow you are. Especially where money's concerned. Did I ever give you my card? R.D. Demolition Limited. Should I know about you people? If you're knocking down Tower Bridge, you should. Ah, Mr. Dennis, that is supposed to be rather hush-hush, you know. Who was that fellow you were talking to? He's an American gentleman. He appears to own half of Arizona. Or Nevada or something. The old bridge is not what it used to be. Apparently they want to rebuild it somewhere else. Tourist attraction. Yeah. They did that with London Bridge a few years ago. Big job. Oh, tremendous. Maybe we better have a little talk about it. Malcolm Street now. Are you sure that's him? Sammy, I nursed him through a double hernia. You don't forget things like that. That's the kind of job my company could handle. Street here? Certainly, Minister. I'll bring the papers up right away. Official business, I'm afraid. I haven't finished yet. The Minister calls, Mr. Dennis. You wouldn't want me to lose my job now, would you? Hold on. You owe me a favour. I want to know a bit more about this Tower Bridge business. You will, my dear fellow. You will. But I'm afraid it's going to cost you a downside more than ten thousand pounds. This way. Good afternoon, sir. Hmm? Good afternoon. How'd it go? All right, Sammy. All right. I want you to arrange a meet with him. OK. Yeah. I think me and Sir Malcolm are about to become partners. That is, if he dances to the right tune. If he doesn't, the thing he'll be hearing is the funeral march. After due consideration, we find that the tender submitted by R.D. Demolition Limited is acceptable and would suggest... Oh, hold on, Simon. I can give you a bed bath or even a blood transfusion, but typing isn't in a nurse's training programme. Well, we must discuss the bed bath a little later on. Now, where are you? Um, acceptable. Not the bed bath, the letter. Pity. Right, acceptable. And would suggest... That's two Gs. An early meeting with your legal representative to settle the final terms of the contract. Paragraph. Well, don't type the word, Jenny. Just start a new paragraph. You stopped me just in time. Perhaps you would care to telephone my secretary at uh, 207 0614 in order to fix a mutually convenient time and place. Yours faithfully, Malcolm Street. I hope it works. It'll work. Why are you so sure? The look in Ray Dennis's eye. Greed, Jenny. When he stretched over the table to pick up his winnings, that's when I knew it would work. Have you noticed the look in my eyes? Greed? Not lust, Mr. Templer. Hunger. Come on, I'll take you out to dinner. <sighs> well, you're on your own now, Ray. What does that mean? Well, I arranged the meat, but you're getting in very deep. I don't want nothing more to do with it. Why the Ritz? Well, obviously, he can't meet you in his office, can he? Good luck, Ray. Sammy. Yeah? If I get something going, 
You'll be all right, OK? Thanks, Ray. But if I get nothing going, there's going to be a lot of trouble. Look, it's a genuine man, Ray. It's open. Come in. Champagne, Mr. Dennis? Why not? Naturally, I couldn't book these rooms in my name. People might think a little bit odd, so I booked them in yours. You'll be picking up the bill. There's some caviar over there, if you care for that sort of thing. Very generous of you, Sir Malcolm. Well, we are estimating this demolition job to be in the region of two million. Do sit down, Mr. Dennis. The deal with Mr. Weppner has yet to be finalised. There may be other buyers from over the ocean. Obviously, there'll be a good deal of attendant publicity. And the contract is open to offers. Now, what I'm offering you, Mr. Dennis, is a guarantee that you will know the price submitted by your competitors before you submit your own price. What I want to know from you is, what's in it for me? A dishonoured cheque. May I? When we're talking in terms of two million pounds, my price comes rather higher than this. I think 5% isn't unreasonable. In, uh, in cash, of course. You are a crook. That makes two of us. Here. Read this. That letter will be on your desk within days of you submitting your price. Assuming you've paid my commission, of course. You owe me a favour, and suddenly I'm paying you a hundred grand. Well, perhaps you can win it back at the poker tables. You think I'm a cheap hustler? No, Mr. Dennis. I think you're the managing director of a firm badly in need of a two million pound contract. I've been looking into your company. It's not the best run company in the country, is it? What does that mean? It means there are bigger companies willing to pay just as much. And I don't owe them money from the poker tables either. You don't mind, do you? Help yourself. What about this American? How do I know his side of the deal's on? Ask him. I suppose you're getting a piece of the action from him as well. Mr. Wepner is well aware that we're not just dealing with the bridge here. It's a slice of British history. Mm. How much are you screwing him for? Oh, no, look. You and Wepner are part of a package. Other people start interfering. I may end up with nothing at all. So you need the two of us. Let's say we need the three of us. Let's have another look at that letter. Where's Weppner staying? Well, Mr. Weppner, I reckon it is a six-month job. Sure is a nice bridge. Where are you going to transport it to? Right in the middle of the desert, not far from Vegas. There's no water there. Ah, we're building our own lake, our own city. It's going to be one of the greatest gambling centers of the world. If we get this bridge, we're going to call it Tower Bridge City. Oh, that's nice. Original. Of course, a lot of people think the bridge ought to stay in this country. So? Well, what I'm trying to tell you is that I can guarantee delivery. But that's going to cost me dough, right? Yeah. It's going to cost you $160,000. The people I work for, somebody upsets them. They get very angry. Oh. I'm guaranteeing that you get delivery. When do you know for sure? Well, it should be signed and sealed by next Wednesday. You have to make your decision right now. This here's a cash check, Central Bank of Nevada. I'm putting next Wednesday's date on it. Tonight, I'm going to call them and tell them to clear this check through a London bank next Wednesday. That means you get paid cash. But no play, no pay, OK? OK. Oh, excuse me. 
You got a license for that? Hell no. Why? Just a word of advice. If you carry a gun in London, you need to be careful. Ray, old buddy, let me tell you something. When I carry a gun, other people, they got to be careful. You got him? Right. Now, when he leaves here, I want him followed. Sir Malcolm Street. I want his private address, phone number, because he's ex-directory. I want you to run his name through that computer you've got at the yard. Any dirt? I want it. And what do I get? Don't be greedy, Inspector. You're being well looked after. Using valuable police time comes extra. And they say we've got the best police force in the world. All right. You've got a bonus. has been avoiding the inland revenue men. Just a little something for a rainy day. You really don't trust anyone, do you? Insurance, Malcolm. Got the letter? Yes. Better to mail it, though. Picture, Sir Malcolm. The Prime Minister would love to see that. Mm. So would the tax man, Ray. What did you get? Quite a lot. The man I followed is on St. Malcolm Street. What? And something else. We've got a big fire in him at the yard under T for Templar. Simon Templar. They call him the saint. <laughs> What goes, huh? I ain't heard nothing from this guy, Sir Malcolm. It's all right, Bows. Look. Got the letter. Well, that's real nice. You got a letter, but I ain't got a letter. Oh, it's probably in the post. Well, it better be. My check to you becomes good at uh, midnight, Nevada time. That means you get your money in the morning. But you'll have more than money coming to you, mister, if this deal goes wrong. No worries, Bows. No worries. Okay. Have a good day. You want to make a good arrest, don't you? Saint's done me for a hundred grand and she's in it with him. Oh, 
Come on, darling. Where is he? I don't know. Nobody treats Ray Dennis like a fool. You know why, Jenny? Because I do nasty things. I know all about that. Still nursing. That's more of a vacation, really, isn't it? Not just a job. You must see some awful things at that hospital. Frightening things, eh? Really terrible things. How long would it take to get over the kind of thing I'm going to do to your face? Months? Maybe never. Pretty girl like you. Plastic surgery. Now, where's Templar? I'm not kidding, Jenny. Where is he? Ray? Shut up! The devil I will! You're going too damn far! If I want to bust her up, I'll bust her up! You? You're bought and paid for! So back off! And for the last time, where is he? He's with Sammy. My money? I don't know, honestly. I think Simon took it with him. Well, they better be there. Now, boys, remember, you're on television tonight, right? So I want a performance. You're the main attraction, right? What I'm looking for is Charlton Heston versus Sir John Gilgood. Hello, boys. Come for the fights. I'll come to strangle you, Sammy. Why, what have I done? I'll come to strangle you and your friend Templar. Try looking in this direction, Raymond. Now, was there something you wanted to say? You've got ten seconds to hand back that money. I'm sorry, that won't be possible. You see, it's going to a very worthy cause. The relatives of the man you murdered. You're gonna love the taste of prison food, Templar. I'll figure you for ten years. Arrest him. You sure you want it this way? Make restitution. Stop waltzing with him! He enjoys it. Come on, Inspector, let's go. This is getting very boring. There you are. You get to travel first class. We don't want to spoil your image. Forget it. I just decided not to press charges. Don't be an idiot. I'm giving him one last chance to square things before I put him in a box. Now get in. You drive. Ray, use your head. In jail, he's not worth a penny to me. I think when Mr. Templar and I are alone, he'll beg to give me that money back. Let's go. Don't worry. I won't even have to put a little hole in him. But if I do, remember, you're on the payroll. You know something, Ray? You're not just greedy, you're stupid. Kill me, you blow the whole thing. Straight on. You got a lousy hand, why don't you throw it in? You'll come up with that money. Not a chance. Any more than you'll pull the trigger when the moment of truth comes. You know why? Witnesses, Ray. All right, I admit you got Inspector Ashton in your pocket, but there are others, like Sammy, for instance. They'll scream to high heaven. They didn't nail me for killing Charlie. And they won't for this. Now you keep holding out and I'll bury you right next to where I buried him. Left at the next lights. And then right. Now time's running out, friend. It's pay or pray. I'll take my chances, because I don't think you've got the guts. Well, funny, I thought I'd answered you. You must be deaf as well as dumb. Out. I said out.
gonna get you. I'll get you. The only thing you're gonna get, Ray, is between 20 years and life. Did you get all of that, Inspector Ashton? I got all of it, Simon. The confession, the works, all taped and recorded. Good. I'll deliver your killer to you as soon as he's got over the shock. You. I'll tell you something, Ray. You're gonna hate the taste of prison food. Well, the only one missing is Ray Dennis. And he's gonna be missing for a very long time. Well, Mum and I would like to thank you all. There's no need. Your father was a good friend. By the way, whatever happened to that check from the, what was it, Central Bank of Nevada? Ray got very angry about that. Tried to cash it. <laughs> no such place. But he gave a very good description of the American who gave him the check. No kidding. Fits you perfectly. Buzz Webner. Well, uh, hold this. Let me see, Inspector. I've got a passport here that says that I'm Charles Onslow. And one says, uh, John McFadden, and another one that says James Andrew Vaughn. But I'm sorry, he ain't got nothing here that says that I'm Buzz Webner. <laughs> sure is a nice bridge. It sure is. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm very glad we didn't sell her. Thank you.